when that first nuke goes off, that takes peace from the whole earth. Okay, because everybody's waiting for a nuke. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much my answer. When they come down, we go up, and the closest they're going to get is probably about the height of a skyscraper. And we might even, some people might even see them when they're in that momentary lapse during the rapture resurrection event where we step outside of time and we observe the resurrection and then we're taken up. These people will actually go up in the air and they'll go right past that nuke. They'll stop and look at it like this, looking at it, touch it, doom, 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 hit, hit it, knocking on it, and then they'll go up in the air. The Passover awe. Can you explain this article, folks? What are we looking at here, Dustin? I just thought it was kind of interesting, you know, how Netanyahu compared Hamas to Pharaoh for not letting the hostages go. You know, and I just thought that was really interesting. And I wanted to uh, share that because they're saying that most of those hostages, if not all of them, are dead. And there's other articles coming out where Hamas keeps changing the... Uh, the deal to release the hostages and i do believe it's because he knows there's not one of them alive anymore and this one too right the u.s yeah that, that was the one that i uh put up earlier when we were we already covered it though in another article it was uh okay about the nuclear weapons oh my God. yeah you know the, you figure those guys they're a bunch of animals and primitive people yeah they were, they, they, you do you do realize you have to give them water to yeah live. you gotta give them some food but mainly water. Water would be good idea. Oh, we'll just leave them. Just leave them in a cave. Leave them there for three months. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Idiots. That's well, probably just, why they all died. Well, not just that. Like, well, what do we do now? Uh -huh. If the Palestinians are saying they don't have food, then how are they going to feed the hostages? Those rations that fall from the sky, they're not giving them to the hostages. No way. Let's let's look at it this way, guys. Let's look at the, the possible scenarios how this can unfold. Okay, there's been many videos of top video creators that, that have said that why, what is the Lord going to do in the next, uh, let's say, five, six months from now? We got left almost, we're almost, we're in April, approaching the middle of the year. Now, let's just say that, you know, none of this stuff was happening. Let's say that the, the wars weren't happening, nothing was going on, it was business as usual, there wasn't a single war going on anywhere. And, you know, Jesus said, I will come at an hour that you do not expect, okay? Now, I think about this, well, Jesus, he can come at an hour we don't expect. Is he referring to the people that are not watching? Or is he referring to all of us that we're not expecting? Because we're expecting him, okay? But he says he will come at an hour we don't expect. He could be referring like the general thing of a thief coming at night. Are you expecting a thief to come to your house today? No, you're not. So maybe he's basically saying that this is generally that you're not expecting me because you don't know the day and hour. Okay. Now there is a lot of people that's going to come as a thief because they're not watching. Am I right on the right track, guys? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so we got to look at it this way. But we are seeing all the wars happening. We are seeing everything that's happening as the Bible predicted. Okay. And, you know, we're not going to look at, you know, false prophets like Nostradamus. I don't, I really don't really have much faith and sit there and, and say, look, oh, let's listen to Nostradamus. No. Okay. Only people we listen to is God's word. We listen to the Bible for our prophecies, predictions and all that. Or they're not just predictions. They're actual things that are kind of come true. That's the manual that God gave us, the instructional manual, how to live and a manual of the future. It's a perfect manual of the future. It, it tells us when he's coming or doesn't tell the day and hour he just tells us when to look for his coming like around that time when things are ramped up and that's how we know how close it is now we have to think about this these scenarios that, that are going to play out in the, in the near future will will we see a limited nuclear exchange maybe one nuclear bomb hits the ground and then the rapture happens or will we see the rapture even before any nukes come out of the ground now, folks, we can we can question this till we are blue in our face, but I believe this is just my opinion. One one way we say this: when the bombs come down, we go up. Well, what kind of bombs are we talking about here, folks? 
maybe just bombs when Israel gets bombed like crazy and she cannot defend, ward off everybody hitting her at once. It is my belief that when the, when Israel is hit from all sides, that 150,000 rockets they hit her and everybody's hitting everybody and we are right there at the point where they're about ready to crack over the little key cards, they punch in the silo codes. And it's my belief that's when the rapture will, will be triggered. And folks, that is getting here, it's getting there, it's getting quickly to that point. But the Lord is not gonna let Israel get completely destroyed. It'll never get destroyed. It's always got God's protection. So where's the rapture fit into all this, okay? Now, I just want to hear it from each one of you guys. I'll start with you, Bob, on this one. What do you think where it fits in? Where do you think it's going to happen at? Well, something like that, you can only know through dreams and visions, honestly, because I've seen them in dreams. I think we all have. And that's why I've been tracking them here for the last 12 years. And basically, um, because it's a future event, and the Bible doesn't really say how this whole war starts. Apostle Paul says when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction falls upon them. Okay. So it's sudden. And that's what nuclear war is. It's sudden. It's very quick. Right. That's where the root word atomo comes from in a moment. Moment. Atomo from Greek. Okay. That's where they got the name for these bombs from. Atomic. Atomo. Interesting how the nuclear war, the name atomo is based on the same narrative of how we leave the earth. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. If he would have said that in Greek, he said in atomo, all right, atomic, here we are, we're taking up in a moment, and we're having this war taking place with atomic, with a momentary weapon, all right? So it seems like to me, according to Dreams and Visions too, that the rapture resurrection will more than likely take place at a nuclear war interchange. Now, I look at also visions from Philip Barnett. He had very credible visions, okay? And based on what he saw, there is a warning nuke that goes off in the Middle East. All right. It's probably going to be Damascus, more than likely. Okay. Something like that, which will cause all of us to sit up and get ready. I mean, if it, that's like that's like the one time it's like you can preach to anybody. And I think that's why that's why God allows it to happen. As soon as you have a nuke. Used on a civilian population, trust me, your next door neighbor that was never willing to listen to you might want to listen to you. That is those workers that come in within the last hour, okay, in the vineyard, okay? So I could see that happening. So I think what's going to happen, we're going to see a nuclear bomb detonated in the Middle East that will cause all of us to come to attention. And then shortly after that, I, my guess will probably be about a day, okay, or two, or maybe seven. Okay, that lines up with no one in the ark, where him and his family were inside the ark for seven days before judgment came. Be it as it may, there's a short period. It's not going to be a year. It's not going to be a month. And during that time, it's going to be easy to preach. If there's going to be a final harvest, like a real fast one, that's going to be right there at the end. When a toilet paper roll spins, gets down to the end, goes, Shh! that'll be it. And according to Dreams and Visions, the nukes start coming over here in the United States. That's where most of our audience is. Okay, we are taken before they detonate on American soil. We are taken right before that takes place. Okay, and what I've seen in dreams and visions, they don't make it to the ground and blow up before we go up. They are seen in the sky. And they come down. I think one guy, the furthest somebody saw it was actually it stayed motionless, the bomb, at the top of a skyscraper. It was sitting there frozen. So that's how close it was. Okay, so it basically it's like it's, it's frozen. It's not moving nowhere. He realized oh, everybody man. around him was frozen too. I, was um, like, I need to share because... this with you when you're done. I want to share this with you. Mm -hmm. I, am, uh, I am not lying about this, folks, but I will let Bob finish, and then I want to say this after you. I'm going to piggyback off what you said about the skyscraper. Go ahead and continue. Basically, that's when it'll be because when that happens, trust me, you're praying for people right now. Pretty much get their head out of their butt right now. Okay. When that nuke goes off, it's going to be everywhere. People are going to run to bunkers. Everybody knows, just like you said, Rick, you throw that first punch, everybody starts throwing punches. So if there's going to be a time to preach to anybody, 
you got somebody on your bucket list that you want to reach and be like, you know what? If you won't listen to me when this happens, I'm going to give you a phone call. Okay, because those nukes are coming our way within about a day to seven days. Seven days max. Imagine the fear. When that first nuke goes off, that takes peace from the whole earth. Okay, because everybody's waiting for a nuke. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much my answer. When they come down, we go up. And the closest they're going to get is probably about the height of a skyscraper. And we might even, some people might even see them when they're in that momentary lapse during the rapture resurrection event where we step outside of time and we observe the resurrection and they were taken up. These people will actually go up in the air and they'll go right past that nuke. They'll stop and look at it like this, looking at it, touch it, doom, 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 hit, hit it, knocking on it, and then they'll go up in the air. And then what I've seen in dreams and visions is once we get up there, then we look down. Everybody, I see this all the time. And all of a sudden, they say, well, once we get up into the clouds, people always say, I see these red and orange and yellowish clouds, like bomb, basically nuclear bombs, blowing up all over the earth. I don't know how many videos I've done of that. I've done tons of videos. Of that. It, it, it happens so much that I started saving, like, templates on my computer of that stuff. <laughs> I started reusing the same stuff, you know, because it's so common. So that's my answer. Family, have you heard about Feed My Sheep Today? A lot of you have. Some of you who are new here haven't. Feed My Sheep Today is a Jesus-only faith-based nonprofit that funds Christian missions here in America and especially in third world countries. For far over a decade, we have been funding Christian mission initiatives all over the world, reaching the lost with the hope and love of Jesus Christ. We are reaching the hard to reach areas far outside the cities in these jungle areas that nobody wants to go to. We are bringing them the hope of salvation through the gospel of grace of Jesus Christ. And before we even preach to them, we are bringing them humanitarian relief aid to help soften their suffering situation. We show them the love of Jesus Christ in this manner first, and then we show them the love of Jesus Christ and what he did for them at the cross to give them eternal salvation. And when we do it in this order, they are always open to hear the message of faith that we have to bring them. And then when it's all said and done, those who choose Jesus, we will give them their own free Bible in their own native language or a KJV if they are an English reader. And from that point, we continue to work with them. And what happens is the Holy Spirit always takes over and begins growing these people where you start seeing pastors and evangelists and missionaries and teachers and much more coming out of these new believers. And then the Holy Spirit uses them to reach other new potential believers, building and further establishing the body of Christ in that area. Reaching, building, establishing. That is the formula that we follow here at Feed My Sheep today. And it's been working out really well. Over the last decade, millions have been led to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Thanks to your continued support and all the Feed My Sheep today missionaries around the world. But now in these final hours, we are being overwhelmed now because we are looking at the final minutes of the harvest, which will be the greatest part of the harvest at the end of the age of grace that we are in right now. A lot of people are waking up. A lot of people are scared. And now the numbers are increasing exponentially for those who are coming to Jesus Christ seeking the truth. And we are running short on Bibles and aid and everything. So if you're listening right now, and if you feel that tug in your spirit, that's just simply the Holy Spirit saying, hey, let's redirect some funds to this vineyard. You know, these funds that are not going to follow you to heaven, but the work that will be accomplished here will. Let's see what we got and what we can do here. After you come to that point, then all you gotta do is just go to our official website, feedmysheeptoday.org. The link is in the description box below. 
Very easy website to use. You'll be done in less than a minute. There you can give by a credit card, PayPal, or you could just send your gift in the mail. Now, let's say you want to make a big impact right now, but you don't have the money to do that right now. The simple thing to do is just become a monthly sustainer. We greatly need monthly sustainers because as long as we know how much money is coming next month, we can plan ahead and schedule where the missionaries need to go and we will know that they will be able to go there with everything they need and buy everything they need because we know those funds will be there at this certain time by next month. Just $10 a month will deliver three new Bibles into the hands of three new believers. How many Bibles did you give out last year? Think about that. And now you can do 36 Bibles to 36 new believers with just $10 a month. If you can afford to do more, then wow, praise God. So that option is there for you as well. And folks, make sure to follow us at Feed My Sheep Today YouTube channel. The link will be below. There you can keep track of everything that we are doing in our missions. So may God bless you all. Thank you so, so much for your much needed ongoing support. See this building right here? I think it was last night. Yeah, it was last night. I uh, had a dream about it. Don't know where it came from. But what was weird about it is I was floating above the building and looking directly down at it. My body was up here. Actually, we use the corner here. I was coming at it like this, floating and then and flying with great speed. And then I stopped. And I remember looking straight down at it like this. And then I came back down again. It was weird. I don't know what to make of this dream. And then the day before that, I had another dream about flying up to buildings and going past them and then coming back down again. I don't know what's going on here. Why am I having dreams about these buildings and stuff? But they're, they're realistically feeling real, like I'm going up and then coming back again. And I don't know what to make of it. And it's funny you brought up the, this, this Empire State Building stuff. And here you are. I wish I would have brought this up at the beginning of the show. And I was going to do it. But, you know, now people think I'm probably making this up since Bob brought it up. No, I'm not, folks. Uh, I'm, okay? I'm I not. Would. I wish I could have shared this at the beginning of the show. That Bob would have been like, well, you said it first. I didn't make it. I couldn't have made it up. You know, but no. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think of that, Bob? What What is that? Your interpretation on that? The reason why you kept come, going up and coming back down constantly is just an indicator that you're about to go up permanently. You go up. Going on, something's pulling you. You're kind of, of having a hard time staying on the ground. Snatched hardcore. I was right. flying up there fast. Just like in life right now. We take care of life, things we got to do when we have to, but then our feet leave the ground in our minds because we're not focused on this world. We're waiting for the rapture. Mm -hmm. So we, we detach from the earth and we kind of go up above the, above the noise and above the storms. And we're kind of like waiting. I, I know I got this stuff to take care of, but I'm focusing on heaven. And then I come back down. I got to take care of the stuff. Then I go back up. Like right why now, New we're York? the show. Why, why the Empire State Building? Why God to do? Why were you showing me, God, the Empire State Building? Well, I was born in New York, folks. Mm -hmm. That's my birthplace. So my body, I'm about to get a new body. It's almost, it's like a new body being, a, being born again in a new body. It's a symbolic thing, but yeah, it could be a representation of me being, when you're being snatched, it's snatched with the force of going up. This was really being snatched. I felt this went at great speed going up above that building. And then I stopped and he, I looked down and I was looking directly over the tip of it. It was weird. Yeah, something so, about that Empire State Building might be a target. They could pinpoint these nukes where they want them to go. If I was Vladimir Putin, if I had to pinpoint anything in New York City, it would be that tower. Mm -hmm. I'll send it right on the top of that thing. That thing will go right down the center of that tower. Independence Day. Just... Right in the middle. You know what, Bob? This also is like the movie Independence Day because that's the same tower that was blown up in the movie. What if the Lord's saying that there's an alien deception coming? New York's going to be looking up at that tower. They'll be looking at everybody and saying, look, New York's going to be in shock when the rapture comes. They'll all be looking up for aliens. They may just show up above that tower right after the rapture. They could do that. These are fallen angels. They could do, do a lot of things. So that's another representation part of this dream. Now, I didn't see any alien ships or anything like that in the dream. 
Now, if it showed me being caught up in a ship, then I'd be like, well, and that's a fallen angel vehicle. I don't want to be caught up in no ship. I want to be caught up in the clouds with Jesus, you know. So, but it, it's just like I said, it's that building. They showed me that. And then another dream is one for more buildings. So, hmm. yeah. And friends, don't forget to request your free After the Rapture Survival Info flash drive today. Free flash drive, free shipping, our gift to you. On this flash drive, there are 7 gigabytes of information that will be very helpful to all your friends and family who will be left behind, starting with the King James Bible, Children's Bible, plus 80 Bibles in other languages that are the most common after English. On this flash drive are also ebooks, letters, sermons, videos, news articles, articles written by believers explaining why mass amounts of people have disappeared and what's next, and much, much more. There's even a section called ABC Salvation, which is a quick introduction that people can read where they can quickly learn about who Jesus Christ really is and a condensed version of the good news of the gospel that was achieved by his finished works at the cross and how they can be saved through him and him alone. These letters are also provided in 80 different languages, most popular after English. All this and much more is available on this flash drive that we can send to you for free. Just email us your request, and that information is in the description box below. Or just go to our website, edvforme.org, and download the entire thing for free. They are separated into four easy downloadable folders you can download and save to any device copy and paste this information to your friends and family's computers and devices put them on other flash drives and hand them out this is an excellent way to get the information out to everybody we know so that way they are prepared if they are left behind information about this is all in the description box below